What's up Outliers? Welcome to a mobility, strength, stretching style follow along for the two wheel sport athletes. And so when I say two wheel sports, I'm speaking of cycling, mountain biking, motocross, and things like that, two wheels. Now, the reason why this is specific to these types of athletes is because we're gonna be targeting muscles that typically aren't as activated or maybe don't get used in certain ways during our two wheel sport activities. So example is when we're doing our two wheel sport activities, typically we're in our, what is our sagittal plane. So left and right, you know, if we're pedaling, our legs are moving forward and backwards in a lot of repetition, which is very quad hamstring dominant. And same for mountain biking and motocross. So no matter what the case is, our lateral movements being our frontal plane, don't get as much attention. And then also our transverse, which is our rotational plane, just aren't quite getting um, the attention needed. But what's nice is by doing this strength, stretching and mobility, is we can actually help those muscles become better for when we do go do in our activity and reduce the chance of you know things like overuse injuries and or just injuries in general. So to get started with it, we're gonna be targeting first our adductor muscles. Um, the adductors sit inside of our legs and they squeeze them together. So very good for squeezing for motocross, but also they help stabilize the knees and give aid to the hamstrings. So for this adductor lift off. We're gonna lay down on one side. It doesn't matter which side you start with. We're gonna cross one leg over the top and then the leg that is out straight, we're actually gonna lift up. And we're gonna do this for 10 times on each side. So keep count for yourself. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on it. Pretty simple. I like to also support myself on my opposite leg just for comfort. But hitting about 10 of these, doesn't matter how high it goes either. We're just looking for that activation over anything else. And it is work. So like, this isn't just gonna be a sit around and stretch type video. We're gonna do some work. And then flipping to the other side, obviously I'm gonna rotate so that I'm not facing away from you, but um, this can be just a rollover for you, unless you wanna continue watching the video. And then 10 on the other side. And these are pretty simple, um, really good warm up, uh, but also really good for activating the adductors at their origin. And that origin is just where it originates from, so where the muscle starts. And then after our 10, we'll move on to a forward fold or a wide legged forward fold. So widen your legs out um, as much as comfort. If that's hard, you can boost yourself up. Um, that will give a little more leverage, but we're gonna go to one side at a time. So roughly 30 seconds per side, but we're gonna lean over to one side and get started on that stretch. This is just an isometric stretch or static stretch, um, I should say. And if you can't reach your foot, that's a-okay. No worries on that. You can always just hold on to your calf. Um, and then if you can reach your foot and you want more of a stretch, just bring that other hand over and that will give you a little bit more of like an upper body stretch, but also more adductor hamstring stretch. And like I said, roughly 30 seconds, probably about there. So we're gonna walk our hands across to the other side for the next 30 seconds. And in this stretch too, you can always go down the middle, more of like a pancake, but I want to kind of incorporate as much movement away from that sagittal plane that I was talking about, which that would be more in that pancake, even though we are, would be stretching the inside of the legs. But it's nice to kind of, you know, get out of our, our norm and our comfort. So, like I said, about 30 seconds on each side. If you want more, you can always go down to center and get yourself a little bit more. But we're gonna move on to a side plank clamshell. Um, so now we're gonna be targeting the outsides of the hips. So we kind of went inside with the adductors. Now we're gonna go outside with the abductors or the adductors, just to be clear on that separation of the B and the B. So side plank is gonna be on the elbow. If the elbow is uncomfortable, you can always go up onto the hand. I do believe the hand's gonna be just a little bit hard, but we'll go with the elbow. 
knees bent at roughly 90 degrees. Um, the hips can be slightly bent, but we don't want to be like totally crunched in. And they also can be straightened out. Just kind of depends on your anatomy and comfort. So we're going to raise up into a side plank and then do 10 clamshells on each side, just kind of like we did with those adductor liftoffs. So up into that side plank and about 10 here. Now, while doing this, the obliques in that bottom glute are keeping us up and that's static while the top one is now dynamic and going into like an external rotation with an abduction. So 10 on that side, flip it on over. Uh, one side is definitely gonna feel different than the other side. That's completely normal. So hit 10 on this other side here. Now, this is my easy side. I can really kind of keep a count of things a little bit more on it, but that's totally normal to have one side be just slightly better. But definitely starting to feel a little bit of burn, which is wonderful. So with that, we're going to take that into another stretch. Now, this next stretch is a um, posterior hip capsule stretch. So we're going to start in a quad up, hands and knees position. And we're going to take one leg. You see how I can win windshield wiper that. I'm going to windshield wiper that over and then take this opposite leg and actually pin it. So it's kind of stuck now, which is wonderful because it's going to help with that stretch. So if you're already feeling the stretch, cool. Don't move. You can stay right where you're at. But if you want a little bit more, you're going to kind of sit that hip back into it. And like I said, this is a posterior hip capsule stretch. So the hip capsule, ball and socket joint, just like the shoulders, um, not quite as much mobility as the shoulders because the hips are more connected than the shoulder blade, but really good stretch because it's going to actually help stretch things like the glute med, glute min, piriformis, a um, little bit of TFL and stuff like that. So all of those muscles that kind of sit on that outside hip. I'm sure that's been 30 seconds. So other side, windshield wipe, take the opposite leg, pin that down, sit that over. Once again, completely normal to feel like a bit of a difference from one side to the other. I definitely feel less of a stretch on this side, but that's not necessarily like a good thing. That doesn't necessarily mean like, oh, this side is totally loosened up. I don't need to stretch it. What it might mean actually is there's more guarding occurring on this side so the nervous system isn't relaxing as much to actually let the like muscle fibers release and stretch so something to think about don't always just think oh I don't feel a stretch doesn't mean that like it's um, stretched out well or has good flexibility could also mean that the nervous system is actually protecting it which for my hips right now <laughs> I wouldn't be shocked to uh, find out that they're in like a major protection so that was the hips. We did adductors, then we did those adductors. So now we're going to go upstream. We're going to go to shoulders and upper back, which first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to remain in that quad up position. I wanted to come out of that real quick, get a little relief off the wrists, a little off the knees. Um, but this next one is more of like a activation strength drill for the rotator cuff muscles, the rhomboids, the traps. So really good upper back and shoulder. So we're going to go back into that quad up, and then we're going to take one arm at a time and we're going to raise it up into our, what is our I, our Y, and our T. So thumb stays up the whole time, so we're always thumb to the ceiling. We're going to do 15 in total, so this being six, seven, oh, that's wrong. <laughs> this is one, two, and three of 15. So. Keep that count. If, uh, if that messed you up, I apologize. But we're gonna just keep moving through one, two, three, five times on each side, 15 total. Doesn't really matter how you count them, but 15 total on each side. And remember, keeping that thumb up as we reach forward and out. So I keep on saying quad up. Quad up's a really good position to be in. Obviously it just means quad reped four points of contact, but this one, obviously we're taking our hand out 
and off, which is nice. And there's a train. So excuse the, the beeping there. All right, now that that has passed, let's move into our uh, thread the needle. So going from that quadruped IYT to a thread the needle. So we just stay in that same position of the quad up once again. And we're gonna start with whichever side you feel good about. And we're gonna thread that needle through, reach as far as you can and drop that shoulder down. I like to look up at the ceiling, then come back through and reach through the other direction with that rotation and look back up at the ceiling again. So we're gonna do five of these on each side. Two. So it's really good upper thoracic rotation, which is the part of the spine that does have the rotational property, which is what lets us um, you know, reach across for things, twist, throw whips, whatever you want to feel uh, comfortable with. But without that upper body um, moving and twisting, we'd be pretty robotic. So this is a pretty important um, piece here. So coming back through, other side. I had to think about which side I did last. Rotating it around kind of flips my perspective a little bit. Remember five, pretty simple, keeping it easy. Nothing too crazy. If any of these movements like feel um, really good or feel like you need to work on them more, by all means, like come back to them, incorporate them into your own warm ups, um, anything like that, because you're, you're the captain of your own ship here. You can do whatever you like with these movements. Hopefully, this is just like a good. Uh, you know, teaching experience so that you can take them with you. So we got one more thing we're gonna do. We're gonna do a McKinsey push-up. Um, if you're not comfortable with push-ups, don't worry, this isn't like a push-up, push-up, a little bit different. And then we're gonna do a down dog with um, some pedals. So first thing is the McKinsey push-up. So we're gonna go prone on our belly. And it's so funny, so like prone for me how I learned it in college was, uh, you know, there's pro and supine. So prone's on your stomach, supine's on your back. And I always remember which was which because of playing things like Call of Duty. You go prone. And so it's just like a fun little thing that you, I always think back to like how I remembered certain things in college for, you know, the sake of anatomy, but also <laughs> how I, uh, you know, found those things in my daily life. I'm like, oh yeah, I've heard of prone, like go prone. Um, Call of Duty, duh. Anyway, so prone, hands come underneath the shoulders, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna press up, but we're gonna leave our hips on um, the floor so that we're actually just going up into like a, a cobra stretch. But rather than it just being like a static hold, we're going to be doing it through this press and hold and back down. What we're really working on here is spinal extension which there's parts of your spine that have more extension than others. But this one's really good for posture. It's also really good for the muscles in the back, really good for the muscles in the front side of the hips, you know, those hip flexors. And so we're gonna hit about 10 of these. The arms definitely do like get worked during this. So if you're feeling a little bit of a burn, especially, you know, we've done a lot of quadruped positioning, those IYTs, like I said, this is strength flexibility and mobility all kind of tied into one. So if you're feeling all of it, then we're doing a good job. Okay, so now that we got through those McKinsey's, we're going to go into the down dog in our last thing here. So the down dog with some pedals. So all that simply means we're gonna go um, into the down dog position and we're just gonna kind of shift our weight around, feel what's best for you. I'm gonna be doing that for me but feel free to look at me as an example of you know, something that you could do different. So start in that quad once again, and then we're going to just push our hips up to the ceiling and down and back. So 
if your down dog does not look perfect, that's okay. I know mine doesn't either. But here's the pedals. So we're just kind of shifting the weight from one foot to the other, feeling that really good stretch, typically like more of a calf stretch, hamstring stretch, and maybe even like some lower back and stuff. So, you know, feel free to kind of feel this out. You can move around more. You could come forward, go back up and in it. It's whatever feels best for you. Your body's your body, my body's mine. So I can't tell you exactly what's gonna feel perfect for you. I can just kind of instruct you in that right direction. It's also a really good spine extension, which we just did some spinal extension. If you wanna push away the floor with your hands, really get that extended, bend the knees a little bit, get that back nice and straight. Really wonderful position, kind of hard. Um, if your arms are feeling tired from everything else, which mine are a little bit, had a pretty good workout already. So um, yeah, this is adding up a little bit, but really good little flow there. Nothing too crazy. Like I said, all we're trying to do is activate muscles that usually are a little bit more like supporting secondary tertiary muscles um, when we're on two wheels. And so it's really nice to kind of give them a little more TLC. They'll thank you later for it. Um, and they'll actually do their job better as secondary and tertiary muscles for your activities. And with doing this routine as well, if you're looking for more of strength-based exercises for your sports or you know anything to basically elevate yourself, go on to outlier.com, check out all of our programs. Those programs can help you in so many different ways and also the programs are tailored really different. So go select which program works best for you and get into that. And then remember to supplement everything with videos like this so that you can take care of your body and feel better and go perform better. And I'm super stoked to be doing these videos again. It's been a little while. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.